Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is while you're watching this. You got the right to be a better rider. Terrible braking, bad body position, no counterbalance. What's going on out there? That's Ryan from the ever entertaining and informative Fortnite channel, link below, getting busted for his riding. And uh, the rest of it you'll see what the police put him through in the training that they do for their riders and also other emergency service riders. In Canada, the public are allowed to have a go on these as well. In the UK, you can get advanced training to a high standard through the likes of IAM and ROSPA and uh, private training agencies as well. But one thing that Ryan doesn't mention in this video is the fact that you also need to look at your clutch position. Um, not so much using it as setting it up in the first place. These are my rubber gloves that I use when I'm working on the bikes. They're size 9. My hands, they're not particularly small, um, but uh, and I usually wear large gloves, motorbike gloves, but for some reason the manufacturer seems to think that we all have hands like Chewbacca, really, really big, bigger than my feet to be honest, and um, I don't. So even wearing sort of thin motocross style gloves like these ones, um, I can get problems trying to reach the clutch as they come out of the factory on most bikes. By the way, I don't wear motocross gloves on the road, but leather gloves are about the same thickness. And what you need to do to overcome this, especially if you're a lady with smaller hands, is to set the clutch up. They come out of the factory everything after about 2007, 8 with really, really high clutch fans, and not all clutch levers are adjustable. If you've got a hydraulic clutch, chances are it is. If you've got a cable clutch, you can't adjust the span of the lever, but you can adjust the cable. A few things to avoid, a few th tips to how to do it, so let's start having a look. And we're going to start off with my autumn-ish mild winter gloves. Bikes come out of the factory with minimal clutch movement and you can see we're trying to feather the clutch on this bike your, my fingertips are only just on it and this is with bare hands so I've set it up to use my winter gloves or autumn winter gloves and be able to feather the clutch with the clutch lever about halfway in what this means is there is a lot more free play as you can see here in contrast to how it comes out of the factory the thing is with thick winter gloves is that they're thick. So we're going to have a look at this glove, which is one that I use, and I'll burn you it up to get an idea of the thickness of the padding. The metrologists amongst you will know how one of these works. If you look at the bottom scale, this is the metric one, and you can see the padding's about 13.8mm thick, and on the imperial scale it's about 0.535 inches, so just over half an inch. Now this bit of kit is a ram mount adder ball. Now as you can see it's got a threaded section on it which is roughly the same thickness of the winter glove allowing for a bit of compression. So what you're effectively doing when you're riding in uh, winter gloves is adding the screwed section of a ram mount to the thickness of your clutch lever. At the handlebar end of a lot of bikes, especially older ones, you'll get one of these adjusters. You have a large locking ring and a smaller adjusting ring, so you slacken the locking ring off a couple of turns, then move the adjusting ring as appropriate to get the right uh, free play on the clutch lever. More modern bikes than my Hornet will just have a single twist ring retained by the little springy bracket here, and it will go clickety-click as you adjust it in or out. Now if you've run out of adjustment at the handlebar end, work your way down to the engine because there's an adjuster here as well on most bikes. It's the opposite way round on this one though. The bigger of the two nuts is the one that will do the adjustment and the smaller one is the lock nut. So undo the smaller one a couple of turns just to give some adjustment, nip the top one up and recheck the clutch adjustment at the handlebar end and make these adjustments until everything's okay and you can comfortably operate the clutch. So now you're ready to go out for your first ride with your nicely adjusted clutch that is set up perfectly for you. Before you do, chuck your bike on the centre stand or paddock stands, whichever one you need to use. Start the engine, chuck it in first, hold the clutch fully in. If the wheel's spinning like this, then what you need to do is just put your hand on it carefully. You don't want to get sucked into the wheel and see if you can stop it. If you can't, go around and operate the rear brake. If it stalls the engine, then the clutch is dragging and it's not disengaging, so you're going to need to adjust it again. It might be you can't adjust it correctly for your hand, but there is a way around that, although it does cost some money. 
and if all else fails you can buy yourself an adjustable lever. This one comes in two parts, the lever itself and the ad adapter block which uh, fits where the old clutch lever did. Make sure you keep the little brass insert in case of a Tracer 9 like this one because you need it to put into the pin here to stop it wobbling about. You'll see that this is also adjustable, the blue bit's the adjuster, and this is on the minimum span position, believe it or not. And uh, the thing is with the minimum span, you do get a bit of free play in it because it opens up a gap here. And this funny looking strange red thing is actually the end of a cable tie, about three quarters of an inch, 20 mil, bent in half, shoved in the gap, and that means that when you reach for the lever, it's not fallen all the way forwards. Um, I use this, it's something I had to uh, get for the bike to make it rideable and that and a bit of handlebar end adjustment for the cable means that the bike's a lot better suited to me now. So there you have my tips if you're having trouble operating your clutch and getting some nice slow riding in. Particularly useful if you're doing any sort of um, filtering in traffic, in traffic jams, wobbling around cones, doing any advanced training. All these little hints and tips will help, as will everything else that you see. Take it or leave it. The techniques and everything I've shown are what I use. It might not suit you, that's fine. Find your own way, stick a video up on here so everybody else can learn as well. Anyway, films are up here, films are down here. I'm going to uh, link to Ryan in the description and if I can work out how to do it on, this end, on the end screen as well. Happy riding everybody out there. My next one's probably going to feature some mud as I'm leading what the first of the Scramalayan tours for the Cooper Motorcycles, where I brought my Himalayan from.